I guess in 92, my wife and I were making whirly gigs that kind of spin in the wind, and we got a piece in a show and saw this guy that had um, figurative pieces, a cook stirring a soup pod or a sword swallower. So I saw that, and it's like, that's what I want to do. I want to make figures, and I make figures move. So I carved this figure out of wood. I decided to put strings on them and kind of put them up on a little stage, so it's like this interactive face-to-face kind of thing where you're operating with the keys out front so there's a key for each of his arms and legs i mean it kind of started with this one piece and it's kind of grown over the years to different stuff my name is tom haney i live in atlanta georgia i'm an artist um, that makes mostly mechanical uh, kinetic figurative pieces people don't always know the word automata but that's the name of what I do. It has a history that goes back to the 16th and 17th century in Europe. Um, when people were making things back then, it was like a clockwork, you know. So they would have a clockwork mechanism. They would wind up and, and make a figure move. Nowadays, it involves that or mechanic, you know, anything that's hand cranked or even with electric motors. One of my heroes as a young kid was Alexander Calder because I love the way things you know his things move his mobiles and you know I always wish I was born a hundred years ago and inventing things around you know the industrial revolution and things you know Thomas Edison and Henry Ford and that kind of inventors and sort of like what I do now is a little bit of my own invention you know a lot of things I I do now I've kind of taught myself you know I've taught myself about how to work with mechanisms, how to carve wood, how to sculpt the heads, and so it's kind of, it is a little bit of that. One of my early influences were was Southern folk artists who, you know, Southern, Southern carvers who just take, you know, a piece of wood and carve figures or, or whatever out of it, and I always kind of admired that, and I kind of did that on my own, on my, in my spare time, you know, it's kind of a hobby and it just kind of turned into I really enjoyed it and really enjoyed working with my hands and and over the years I've gotten much much better at at carving and it's a sort of I still love doing that. Uh, This is the piece I'm working on now it's a commission for a woman in Philadelphia and she had this idea of I think she saw something some once upon a time of a box that opened up and when the the lid opened, you hear this applause and cheering, and I came up with this sketch, and she's like, yeah, great. So the idea here is there's a woman on stage, so when you open the lid, the woman in the stage pops up, and there will be a a, a sound element that will um, get triggered that will be the applause and the cheering. I always think when I'm making these pieces, I'm like, you know, in a hundred years from now, somebody's going to be taking this piece apart and thinking, God, this is incredible. Because <laughs> a lot of stuff that I do is is inside, is hidden, is covered up. You know, how I put things together, how I join the wood, <clears throat> how I do the mechanism, how I, you know, like sew the clothes, everything I try to do, you know, as good as I can do it. Because I carve the leg and carve the arms and elbows. Even snow, a lot of times it'll be covered up with fabric. No one will ever see it. It's like, well, I'll know. And you could feel the, how it's carved through the fabric, like a leg, if it has pants on. It, it just goes back to the quality, I think, and putting the time in to make the piece right. Mm. I think, like my wife says, you don't really always pick, choose to be an artist. It's like in you, or it's either in you or not. There are some people that would probably try to be artists that's maybe that's not what they should be. Uh, more often than not, it's there. I think there are a lot more creative and artistic people out there who are probably doing something else. You know, a lot of it is based on the economy, just because what people, you know, people in good times, people buy more art and they have more of a disposable income. And uh, as the economy got worse and worse and worse, and things are getting a little tighter and tighter and tighter, and I just think that forces you to, if you're going to commit to doing this, it just forces you to find a way to do it. If I was working 40 40 hours a week, I just wouldn't have the time or energy to do what I'm doing. So, you know, like I'm committed, I'm just, I'm going to do it and I'm going to make it work. There's just not enough time to do the things I want to do, you know, not only making the art, but also making the connections with people and trying to work on PR and get your images out there and get your name out there. And, you know, I think that's one of the 
pieces of the puzzle that's missing for me is like uh, PR recognition, name, you know, name recognition. And I think the artwork is strong enough um, and getting stronger in that I just need to work on that. This is what I love, this is what I want to do, this is what I think I should be doing. Um, just looking at my history and my path, this is kind of led, it's all led to this point and it's f from here on it's going to play itself out the way I think I, uh, I think it should. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that make any sense at all?